Welcome to July Said News. My name is Rob. What I want to do is introduce you to the future investors of crypto. What I'm talking about is I got to sit down with Miss Teen Crypto, Randy Hipper. And to give you a sense of just how far along she is at uh, the age of 20, she's been on Fox News not once, but twice. She's interviewed the mayor of New York City. She sat down with heavyweights like Mark Yusko, Gareth Salloway, Altcoin Daily, Crypto Zombie, Charlie Lee, former head of Litecoin, Around the Block, and my personal favorite, Around the Metaverse, was Stash. And we're going to sit down and just, it's a nice insight as to where things are going. And if you've ever thought uh, that there's a problem with crypto or you didn't understand if it's going to zero, just listen to this interview about where things are going and why the next generation is going to take it to a whole nother level. I have a couple of flaws. I have many flaws, actually. And one of those flaws is trying to see the investment strategy from a, a different perspective. I've been in the game for investing for quite some time. So I think it's important that we take a look at our younger counterparts to see what they're doing. So I brought on Miss Team Crypto, Randy, from her YouTube channel, just to answer some questions. Randy, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Rob. I'm very happy to be here. Yeah, actually, yeah, we had a great time. Like, we had a good time. We had this uh, fun little uh, banter back and forth. There was an interview, ah, gosh, almost a week ago or so. And then yeah. here we are. We just talked about the random things that are going on in the in the crypto space and things like that. We didn't really get too much into um, strategies themselves because, you know, we just talked about so many different things. So I'll link down in the description. Everybody can check it out. And then, of course, today, just for posterity, we're taking a look at February 16th, Thursday. And, of course, we've got a pretty good, nice run up. <laughs> Somehow, yeah. Bitcoin's almost at 25K and things like that. But, Randy, let's just talk into it. So, first of all, tell, let's back up. Tell everybody how you got into crypto and when you started and what your initial strategy was when you, when you got into digital assets. Awesome. So my journey started when I was 13 in 2016. My dad was telling me about Bitcoin and I just didn't listen to him at first. I thought he was crazy. All I heard was adult things, numbers. I essentially <laughs> didn't think I could do anything with Bitcoin. And I was pretty ignorant. I was 13. Uh, when By the time I was 16, we did our first Bitcoin transaction in 2019 and I saw how easy it was to use. All you have to do is scan a QR code, copy and paste an address, and that's it. Anyone anywhere in the world with an internet connection can send and receive value instantly. If you go into a store, they scan my phone, or I scan a QR code, and it changes the way we transact forever. I literally know kids that throw their spare change in the garbage because it's just not usable, um, and it's not feasible to carry around anymore. And I knew you know, the way money was going, it was going to be digital. So why not have control over your funds and use Bitcoin to do that? Um, in addition to that, at that kind of same time, I saw I had $200 in my savings account. And I learned growing up that if you kept your money in the bank, you were to earn interest and that number would go up. But instead, what I saw was my $200 was always $200 and my purchasing power was going down. So I figured, <laughs> why not just put that in Bitcoin? I'm not touching it anyway. What's the risk? It's $200. So that's exactly what I did. And by the time I was 17, I you know, it was April 2020. The world was sad. It was lockdowns. And I liked going to school. I loved being involved in stuff. And I liked being positive. And I wanted to be a part of a community. So I just created the handle Miss Teen Crypto, started tweeting. By November 2020, I was hitting the streets, asking strangers in New York if they know about Bitcoin. I started minting NFTs. And now I'm 20 years old today. And I, you know, I'm really happy to be here. And, you know, my goal from the start and always will be is to spread crypto and NFT adoption to Gen Z and educate the masses on cryptocurrency and NFTs. I mean, I think that's the most simple thing. And I think of like a Bitcoin address as just another username, you know, instead of just going on PayPal or Venmo and just Venmoing my friends or PayPaling my friends, I could just send Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and that they're in between their there's no middlemen. I know, especially, you know, Gen mm -hmm. Z, we always transact with Cash App. We always transact with PayPal and things like that. And, you know, sending money from one person to another with your balance, that's easy. It's simple. But it's when you deposit money that there's fees. When you take your money out of those third party apps, you put it in your bank account. That's another fee you're hit with. When if you transact with Bitcoin or, you know, something like Litecoin, where it's just fast and easy, it's one little fee right there, then that's it. And it, of course, it's peer to peer payments. It's just me to somebody else with no intermediary. Um, you know, with Gen Z being digitally native, we understand that concept. You know, I was buying iTunes gift cards to have digital money, to buy digital games, digital assets, digital tokens to transact within games. So we understand the concept of digital property. If you didn't take a selfie you weren't there we want to own our property <laughs> so when it comes down to bitcoin and cryptocurrency and being your own bank and owning your value that's an easy concept for us to understand 
Yeah. See, like, like, like for us, it was, a, you know, what, what's weird though, <clears throat> all the things you just talked about were a little bit, uh, it, it was, it was understandable. But one thing that you said is, you know, you talked to your dad and he, he talked about saving and putting it in the bank account and you're like, wow, it's the same amount of money that I had. Like for, this is what's crazy. Like I was told by my parents and by my grandparents, the exact same thing. So <laughs> over, I mean, over decades, it's the same advice that we've heard. And now here we are. And we can just see that everything is just either either inflating away or it gives us no or very little purchasing power. So it's just, it's just interesting how there's one part there, but the other part is like radically different. We, you, okay, so you guys talked about, or you talked about no middleman. I think, is it because of just, just the economy, the economy we, we're in, the gig economy, you know, doing away, like just take like, like Uber, you know, to, to get rid of uh, the middle person to call for a taxi, something like that. Is it just like, that's just normal for everybody? And Gen Z. Yeah, I mean, I, I think a lot of like traditional taxi services are making a comeback one because I think uh, mm. like the monopoly that kind of Uber holds is a little crazy. And I think the price surging is definitely a problem in New York City. But that's like a whole different podcast. <laughs> um, I, I do think that, you know, ease of use is definitely something that Gen Z loves and we like instant gratification. And that's what, you know, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency gives us being that, you know, if you send a traditional transaction like a wire transfer over the weekend, you're not getting that until Monday. But Bitcoin's 24-7, right? So you send Bitcoin right now, you'll be able to get it today, whenever that confirms in 20 minutes or so. Um, so I definitely think that the instant gratification is a part of why Gen Z would gravitate towards Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and in, tradition, in comparison to the traditional financial system. Gotcha. Okay, so that was a, that was a good little primer. So we got that, that part of the way. Let's talk about, because you got into it when you were 13, 14, you know, with yeah. your dad. So you were around during the collapse roughly of 2018 and then the resurgence of 2019, 2020. So take us back when you were, because you got into it at that point. Was that like one of those times where you're just like, oh, this is just a normal thing and not a big deal. And you shrug it off because, you know, and this is the, this is the thing because you're so young. You're like, well, I got time. But I like, like when I got, when, when I went through it and then some older people <clears throat> like, holy smokes, we went to 2017. So everything go up and then it just, you know, bottomed out. We're like, there's 70, 80, 90% gone. So talk, talk, talk us through it when you went through it. When I was going through it, you know, I was I was younger, so the perception of money wasn't as heavy, I guess, as it sure. would be for someone older, right? So the volatility didn't bother me, and especially when I started um, my Twitter account was April 2020, right? Bitcoin was seven grand, and I was going mm -hmm. around like, yeah, and I was going around to my classmates, I was going around to teachers, I was begging people, let me give you money, let me give you ten dollars of Bitcoin, <laughs> and nobody wanted to take it. Two people took it. I actually did a video with uh, my friend that was <laughs> running for school president back then in high school, and he took it. I gave him five dollars of Bitcoin, and now he texts me all the time. When it goes up. So I definitely do think um, that again, like, you know, they're very interesting and the cycles are very interesting. But even if you're new to Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and you haven't gone through it before, do your homework. Like you could see like Bitcoin going down 70 to 85 percent. That's normal. That's happened so many times already that if you believe in this technology and if you went in doubt, zoom out on the yearly charts, you know where Bitcoin is going. You understand why it's doing this. So it wouldn't really scare you, the volatility, when if you're looking, for example, 10, 15 years down the road. Sure. That makes a lot of sense. But that's it's the longevity, which is kind of it's a little bit different to think about that, especially somebody like you're well ahead of the game, because if you know that already, like that took me until I was like in my 40s to figure that out. So, <laughs> yeah, it's just a, a longer time. Well, 40s into the crypto. The other part for businesses, it just knew that if you just stick around, do the right things, things will work out. Exactly. OK, so, Randy, talking about that and then moving into it, let's just talk about investment strategies. What do you do? Are you doing like a value cost averaging where you just took a big, just take big lumps and just put it into every like six weeks? Do you do a dollar cost averaging and just kind of like every day, every week? Or you just say, you know what? One big spot when I was 15 years old, I told my dad to put all my money into it. Or how'd you do it? And actually talk about that. And also, what are you investing into if there's anything outside of Bitcoin? Yeah. So, um, you know, I initially when I first created my Twitter account, I know I had like a few extra bucks and I was like, OK, you know, I'm going to be missing crypto. I'm going to invest like, you know, I'm going to really just go in, you know, go for it. So I was investing before I created Missing Crypto, of course. But, you know, my I had a few bucks. So I, I obviously diversified. I started with Bitcoin and I always tell people Bitcoin, Litecoin and Ethereum. Um, those are the core three. So that's what, you know, I initially was starting off with when I was new. Um, so that's what I really started off with. And I just started dollar cost averaging from there. So I had my initial investment that I knew I wasn't going to touch anyway. And I still 
don't plan on touching a lot of this stuff I'm buying just because I want to hold it. I really believe in this space long term. However, I think if you're not looking at the charts all the time, you just want to accumulate no matter where the price is, because at the end of the day, number go up or number go down, you still want money that belongs to you, right? So right. dollar cost averaging, I think, is a great way just to accumulate. For example, every Friday, buy $20 of Bitcoin, which I think is feasible for the average person. So I always recommend dollar cost averaging. And that's more of what I do. Dollar cost average hodl. Dollar cost average. Now, do you invest in anything outside of uh, or still invest outside of Bitcoin? I know you said like uh, Litecoin, Ethereum, those other things, but any kind of alts that you're getting into? And then um, any kind of risky degenerate plays? Everybody wants to know that question. The risky degenerate plays. Like, I don't really get into the risky degenerate plays, like, you know, because I, I, again, like, I'm just trying to be, I'm a little more conservative sometimes, but I definitely always tell people Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, those are my top three. And if you want to get spicy, I always throw in Digibyte as well, because that's always a, been a bit, a bit, like, something I've been a fan of since I got into the space as well. Digibyte. I remember Digibyte being being the next big thing. It was supposed to be. The, the it next will be. I I believe it'll make a comeback. I really do believe. D Randy, I hopefully. Hope I hope you're right. I think I have some some Digibyte somewhere, and I bought it for next to nothing. Probably just it's languishing on some wallet. I just have to find out where it is. Okay. Yeah, it's had a nice run recently. Um, if you've been looking at the charts, but you know, I look from the reason why. Um, is because I look at money and like again like gen z we want instant gratification we want something that's going to work right there and then like if you're spending five dollars at the coffee shop with bitcoin that's going to take like 15 20 minutes to confirm and you're not going to sit in the coffee shop for 15 20 minutes to make sure this all confirms you know that's why i like things like litecoin digibyte it's basically right there and then you confirm you leave and you have a good day um especially for micro transactions yeah absolutely okay so now we know so we know about Randy. She's she's been in she's been in this game for a lot longer than uh, people have been around, have been around. You do uh, investing, but it's not uh, the very risky DGEM plays. Very conservative. You understand that it's going to be a long term play. I got to tell you, most of these people and for you watching watching the video, link in the description uh, for for Randy's uh, YouTube channel. But just sound off. How long did it take for you before you realized? those basic principles of investing and how far off are you? That, I think that would be the, be the biggest uh, comments I'd like to see uh, down below. And then uh, Randy, that is for this one. I will just say before we head out of here, let's talk about your channel real quick. Yeah. Which you got quite a bit of, uh, of videos, quite a bit of things. And you go live quite a, quite a lot, it seems like. Let's yep. see. Live streams. There they are. So talk to us because I the ones that I watch – it's kind of like you do a little TA, you do a little basic fundamental analysis, and you also did the news. What else, what else do you guys do over here? Yeah, so the Daily Zest is a relatively new show. I've been doing it for a few months now. That's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 12 p.m. Mm -hmm. Eastern. So I go over, again, like I'm learning charts. So I go over the charts a little bit and then I go into the news because a lot of the time, if you're if you're busy, you have a job, you know, whatever, you can't, you're not like crazy like us that are constantly on crypto Twitter. <laughs> so I try to just get the core news, break it down simple and everyone could kind of like get their news in a nice and positive way um, every day. And then the Miss Teen Crypto show I started um, when I was 18 or 19 and that that was that that's just a show to follow people's lives and how they got to where they are now, especially in crypto. We all come from different places, different countries, different socioeconomic statuses, and we all end up in the same place, a part of the same revolution. So that's why I started my show to just introduce people. How did you get here? What was your life like? And I've had, you know, of course, Rob, who is awesome. People like CZ Binance, Charlie Lee, people from CNBC, Fox Business, MMA fighters. And it's just like everyone and everyone, um, no matter where you're from, media, crypto, whatever, I want to know your story. And it's really interesting to learn about a lot of these people because at the end of the day, everybody's human. And a lot of the time in crypto or, or in really any industry, people put others on a pedestal and forget that they're a real person and expect like all these crazy things from these people. Sit back, guys. Everyone's a person. Let them be, you know? Yeah, everyone's a person and we all make mistakes and we're fallible. <laughs> all right. So, so Randy, I'm going to link, and for you watching the video, I'm going to link uh, Randy's uh, YouTube channel uh, below. Also, I think you've got uh, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and those things. So you can follow Randy on that one. And that's it. Randy, thanks so much for stopping by. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me, Rob. You're the best. And I can't wait to talk to you more in the future. Happy to be right. here. Yes, we'll have you back. Everybody like and subscribe, all that good stuff. And we'll, uh, we'll cut it off there. So thanks so much for stopping by, everybody. See you on the next one.